thighs, thighs, thighs. The holy symbol of thighs. Yes, Atelier Thyza is here. The long-awaited adaptation of the thickest Atelier game ever. Well, honestly, it's really the only thick Atelier game. Mixing gathering, character moments, and brewing weird chemicals inside of a dangerous pot of unknowns. But is there anything to the show besides its thickness? That's what I'm gonna get into with my first impressions of the first three episodes, which is technically four episodes because the first episode was really long. A series that is airing in the summer 2023 anime season. So let's jump right into those. And yes, I do realize that I'm probably saying Atelier wrong. I don't care. I hate the name. Atelier Riza opens up with Riza Stout, and she's currently living on the Kirken Island. And they sort of have this tradition on the island itself where everybody there doesn't leave the island. And this bothers Riza because she's absolutely bored here. She wants adventure. She wants to leave. She wants to do something besides what her family wants her to do. Her father is a farmer, and they assume that she's going to take over the farm eventually. But she hates it. So she decides one day she's going to go on an adventure. So she grabs her two friends, Lint, who is a swordsman in training, and Tao, who is a bookworm, jumps on a boat and leaves the island to the mainland where they go out on an adventure in the forest. Well, at some point, they end up running into a girl named Claudia, and she was actually a part of a caravan that was on their way to the Kirken Island, a caravan of merchants. After they end up saving her from a couple of slimes, they run into a pair of fairies that just completely obliterate them. But thankfully, a bodyguard for hire ends up showing up and saves their lives. When they arrive back in Kirken Island, something happens. Riza, Lint, and Tao experience something while hanging out with these bodyguards. One of them is Impel, and Impel was both an alchemist and somebody that was able to read the writing that Tao is currently researching. So Ryza really badly wants him to teach her how to do alchemy, and Tao really badly wants him to translate the book that he's been working on. The other bodyguard was Lila, and she's an incredible warrior. And so obviously Lint really badly wants her to train him. Well, obviously Impel and Lila is like, we ain't got time for these kids. Something changes their mind. One of the books that Tao has is exactly what Impel's looking for. Impel is there in order to research the ruins there. Additionally, Ryza shows promise in actually being an alchemist, which is apparently very rare. So they kind of come to an agreement. Impel's gonna help Tao and Ryza, while, yeah, Lilla is supposed to train Lint. <laughs> but that doesn't really work very well. <laughs> Lilla doesn't like to bother with anything. <laughs> But something really special happens with the whole situation. Again, Ryza really hates it on this island. She wants adventure. She wants to experience new things. Lint has kind of been in a stump. And Tao hasn't been able to do anything with these books that have been passed down through generations. So it sort of re-sparks the inspiration in these three kids. The three brats of the island suddenly have purpose. And I think that's so far what this story has kind of been going for. Finding purpose. Finding reasoning in your life. And that's sort of the setup so far with this whole story. Ryza trying to find these resources, craft things, and learn more about the people of the island itself. So my thoughts on Atelier Thyza. Honestly, I've been an off and on fan with the Atelier series ever since the PS3 era. I've done a lot of reviews for this series, and I really have enjoyed them. And yes, I did pick up Thyza. But I never played it. I, I did the opening segment and never really got into it. They're really kind of a series that focus on characters themselves, their interactions, and yes, like I said, gathering and synthesizing and all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, one thing I've never really cared about with the Atelier series is the overall story. It's never been interesting. And so even with previous anime adaptations, I never had any expectations for them. Again, it was always about the character moments, which aren't like crazy good. But still, yes, the thighs has drawn me in once again. Jokes aside, yes, I do like the thickness. And yes, I can at least give Leiden Films one massive credit, and that's the idea that they are sticking with this character design. This is obviously something that drew in a new audience to the Atelier series. It broke numbers, it was really successful, and yes, you could probably attribute to that to, yes, the thickness, the thighs, all that kind of stuff. Which has honestly never really been a big thing with the Atelier series. They've always been pretty flat. Which is fine. I'm not saying anything against that. But honestly, outside of that, the show is kind of inconsistent. The faces and the character designs themselves are just kind of back and forth between being really good and sometimes not good. So it's kind of a sad thing that they can't really keep a consistency with the visual style of the show. And there's times where their focus on making sure that thickness ends up in the frame is almost comical. Yes, I can understand sometimes where Ryza kind of jumps over the camera perspective and it, you know, you get the shot really quickly. But there's other times where 
Lint, Tao, and Ryza are walking beside each other down the street, and for some reason, they have to make it to where Ryza is has, like, extremely long legs just so that her thighs are in the shot. Lint is way taller than Ryza. Now, granted, Tao is just a little bit shorter than Ryza, but Lint is tall, and so to have her thighs in the shot and Lint's not is a little bit going too far. This is... I... I seen this shot and I literally laughed for hours on end about how absurd it was. They were trying so hard to make sure the thick was in the shot. Again, I appreciate it, but that's too far. I'm, I'm sorry, you're going a bit too far. And yes, you have other characters like Lila and she's got the thickness going on. But anyhow, visual design aside, which I think overall, I think it looks really good. Besides a wonkiness here and there, it looks good. The show itself, the story, the character moments, this is where we're gonna start to get into a big massive question mark for me. The first episode was honestly a slog to get through. It was a two episode length and it was just boring for the most part. It was a lot of setup to the idea that Ryza doesn't like being on the island, her getting her friends together and leaving the island, getting in trouble, coming back, and then finding purpose in life. But thankfully episode two was a lot better. I started seeing a little bit promise here because it's really, again, like I said earlier, the theme is finding purpose. These kids that have no purpose, finally discovering purpose and really growing as individuals. They're growing from children to having purpose and becoming adults. And that's something that's even more enhanced with the third episode is you start to kind of get them interacting with villagers, rise of finding ways to help people around the village and using her purpose for others and discovering more about people on the island through her services, finding this one leaf, using her ointment to heal this old lady, learning that even though they're called the three brats of the island, there has been three brats before. As much as this island wants to push this idea of, you know, stay on the island and don't do stupid crazy stuff. Yes, adults of this island had their phases of doing stuff like that. And I really did like that little message. Again, kind of in the midst of Ryza doing exactly what she has now learned how to do. Gather and craft things. She's finding fun in this kind of stuff. And yes, the other two brats with Lint having to learn how to fight and learning essentially what is more important in combat itself, which is survivability versus just swinging your sword and killing things. And while we haven't got yet too much into Tao, yeah, I'm assuming eventually it's probably gonna get into these stories of his ancestry and books that they've always kind of studied. With how kind of sinister Empel and Lila looked, I really thought they were gonna be kind of the villain characters on the side the entire series. But in actuality, they've kind of turned into a give and take sort of relationship with the three brats teaching them things while at the same time not always just giving them everything they want. It's sort of teaching them responsibilities and sort of nurturing their future. And yes, you have Claudia, which is the merchant's daughter. She's sort of trying to find her own purpose, finds jealousy and the bravery of Ryza and trying to help herself and kind of standing out. All in all, it's not that I'm claiming that the show so far is groundbreaking and it's got these really great plot twists or anything like that, but it's been sort of the daily lives of the town brats and them discovering true purpose. And because of that, it's sort of heartwarming in a way. Well, at the same time, not really that incredibly interesting, but it's sort of something that I found a lot more entertaining than something like Eshka and Logi. As to if this will be the one that will actually have an overall plot that I'm actually interested in, that's the big question mark. But I'm not too sure if this one single core can manage to adapt an entire game. I think typically they have two cores, but of course they do have technically sequels of the Ryza and they could always adapt those as well. So this might be something they wanna actually do everything with. But yeah, with all that said, I'll definitely be checking out the rest of the series. I think it's doing enough to make it entertaining for me, honestly. But if any of that sounds interesting, you definitely check it out. But I hope you guys enjoyed my first impressions of Atelier Ryza. If you did, make sure to that like button down below, comment, let me know what's the series so far if you're gonna be checking it out. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get on my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you wanna support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips, links, super thanks, and membership button down below. Greatly appreciate everybody it does. And y'all take care.